Hello everyone, welcome to Rush Time Summary Videos. In this video, I'm summarizing the lesson Galvanic Cells. A galvanic cell can de derive electricity using a spontaneous redox reaction. So the reaction written here, copper two plus and zinc, giving copper and zinc two plus is a spontaneous redox reaction. So I have set up a galvanic cell using this reaction. So if you see in this reaction, you can see that copper two plus is becoming copper, which is the reduction and zinc is becoming zinc two plus, zinc is going to zinc two plus, that's the oxidation. Okay, so to construct the galvanic cells, I need two half cells. So one side is the zinc, zinc two plus zinc half cell and the other side is copper two plus copper half cell. So if you consider the reactions occurring in each half cell according to the given equation, in the zinc uh, two plus zinc half cell, you can see in the equation, the zinc is under becoming zinc two plus. So zinc is going to zinc two plus. So you put electrons on the right hand side, therefore that is oxidation. And in the other side, you can see copper two plus is going to copper. So copper two plus plus two E copper. So that is reduction. Okay, so now we have two half cells. So in one half cell, the reduction happens. In the other half cell, the oxidation happens. The half cell or the electrode. So if you look at each half cell, you have a solution. In the zinc uh, two plus zinc half cell, you have zinc uh, two plus solution and you got zinc electrode. So this is the zinc electrode, the zinc metal. And the other half cell, you got copper two plus and that's the copper electrode. The electrode where the oxidation happens is called the anode. So because in this side, the oxidation is happening, the zinc is undergoing oxidation. I say zinc electrode as the anode. So this is the anode. So in galvanic cells, anode is negative. So we say it's the negative terminal of the galvanic cell. An electrode where the reduction happens is called the cathode, so copper, electrode is the cathode here. That is the cathode. And cathode is positive in a galvanic cell. Now you can see in one half cell, the electrons are produced, the zinc is making electrons, and the copper two plus is taking electrons. So the electrons will now transfer from one half cell to the other through the external circuit. So this is a wire. So the electrons are moving from zinc electrode to the copper electrode. So when there is a movement of electrons externally like this, it will generate electricity. The voltmeter will show a reading now. So why we have a salt bridge? So, so as the salt bridge material, the salt bridge can contain um, ionic compounds like a potassium nitrate. So why we need a salt bridge here? You can see the two solutions are connected by a salt bridge. The purpose of the salt bridge is to balance the excess, excess charges produced in each half cell. So if you look at uh, the zinc side, so you can see with time, it's making more and more zinc two plus ions. This side, that side becomes positively charged. Therefore, the salt bridge will provide negative ions or anions to balance those positiveness. And in the other side, you can see the copper two plus, which is positive, it's reacting now, which means in, in, in this side, the negative ions will accumulate. So the salt bridge will provide now positive ions to balance those excess charges. So the purpose of the salt bridge is to balance the excess charges produced to maintain the electrical neutrality. Okay, these are the important things to remember about, uh, about a galvanic cell. Oxidation occurs at the anode, so you can remember by an ox, anode and oxidation. So red cat, red cat means reduction occurs at the cathode. So oxidation, we know that already, oxidation is the loss of electrons and reduction is the gain of electrons. So you can remember oil rig, 
oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. So in a galvanic cell, anode is the negative terminal, a cathode is the positive terminal. The electron flow in a galvanic cell, electrons are going from anode to cathode, which means negative to positive. The ions are flowing from the fall bridge. So remember, anions are going to the anode side. So if you look at the previous diagram, you can see that uh, anions, the negative ones, went to the anode side. And cations are going to the cathode side. So those are the things to remember about a galvanic cell. Okay, now we will see how to use a electrochemical series in galvanic cells. So in your data book, in VC chemistry data book, you can find the electrochemical series, which list uh, the half reactions. So for example, we'll take uh, AG plus. So we will take AG plus AG half cell and sink two plus sink half cell. Okay, so how do we know in these two halves, if I construct a galvanic cell using these two half cells, so how do I know which one is the anode and which one is the cathode using the electrochemical series? So in your electrochemical series, so, you have two sides, so you have equations given as reduction, the reaction going in forward direction or reduction. If the reaction is going backward direction, that is oxidation. If you look at all the chemicals on the left-hand side, they are oxidants because they all undergo reduction. So therefore, all the chemicals on the left-hand side are oxidants. And all the chemicals on the right-hand side are reductants because they all undergo oxidation they can go backward so they all undergo oxidation therefore they all are reductants so we find the strong oxidants at the top so greater the e note value the greater e note value tells that reduction is more likely to happen therefore the strong oxidants are at the top of top left so left side all the chemicals are oxidants but the stronger ones are at the top so when you consider reductants, reductants are on the right hand side, but the stronger ones are at the bottom. Okay, so now we'll go to the question. So I have a galvanic cell constructed from AG and zinc half cells. So to find out which one is behaving as the anode and which one is behaving as the cathode, you select each uh, reaction from the data book from the electrochemical series. So you can see that uh, this is the this is one reaction that's the AG's reaction and this is the sink reaction okay so now you found the two reactions the top reaction will always go reduction in the forward direction so top reaction is AG reaction it will undergo reduction in the forward direction which means AG reaction is going this way right and the bottom reaction will undergo oxidation in the backward direction. So go, going forward direction means what? Reduction, right? In the, according to the data book here, according to the electrochemical series, you can see AG plus plus E going to AG, going forward, that is reduction. So we know in a galvanic cell, reduction is happening at the cathode. So therefore, AG electrode will behave as the cathode. So in this half cell, AG electrode is the cathode. And the sink reaction is going backward direction, which is the oxidation. So the electrode where the oxidation happens is called the anode. So sink electrode will behave as the anode. So using the electrochemical series, then I can find out which is the anode and which is the cathode. Another use of electrochemical series is to predict spontaneous redox reactions. We'll take one example. We want to find out whether F2 and lithium will react spontaneously or not. Okay, so what I do, I find these chemicals uh, from the electrochemical series. So F2 is, this is F2 and that is lithium. So F2 
can undergo reduction in the forward direction. Lithium is on the right hand side, so reductant, it can undergo oxidation in the backward direction. So, so when you join these two chemicals, if it is making a line with negative gradient, this kind of a line, then those reactions are spontaneous, right? So what you have to do, you select the two chemicals and when you join them with a line, if the line is negative gradient like that, so I can say then that reaction is spontaneous, which means F2 and lithium, when you mix them together, they can react naturally. So that's a spontaneous reaction. Okay, we'll take another example. Okay, now I want to find out whether AG, whether AG and we'll say lithium plus are reacting together. Whether AG and lithium plus are reacting together. Okay, so this is AG and that's lithium plus. Right now, when you join them with a line, so that doesn't form the negative gradient line. So it's now this way. So that way they can't react, right? So for them to react, your oxidant has to be from the top. The reductant has to be from the bottom. Now in this case, so AG is a reductant. The reductant is at the top. That's why it's not working. So this reaction is not working. So it's, we say the reaction here is non-spontaneous. And also from the electrochemical series, I can predict the cell voltage, or we say the inode cell. So if I uh, construct a galvanic cell using AG and zinc half cell, so how to find the inode cell? So inode cell is equals to the inode of the higher half cell minus the lower half cell. So higher half cell means the reaction, the top reaction. So it's the AG reaction because I'm constructing my, uh, my galvanic cell using AG reaction and the sink reaction or this AG and the sink half cell. So E naught cell equals to E naught higher half cell minus the lower half cell. So the higher one is AG1. AG1's E naught value is 0 0.8. Minus the sink's E naught value is, you can see 0. Point. It's negative, so put negative 0. 0.76. So negative and negative becomes positive. Therefore, you get 0. It's 0. 0.8 plus 0. 0.76. 0. 0.8 now plus 0. 0.76. So therefore, you get a positive voltage. So you can see it's uh, 1.56 volts. A positive voltage indicates a spontaneous redox reaction. So AG plus and zinc can react spontaneously. Therefore, you get a positive E naught value. Okay, now it's the time. So now we have uh, finished the lesson. It's the time to do questions. So you can find the questions and summary notes uh, on page 33, 37 to 43 on my study guide. And thanks for watching my video. If you have any questions, uh, you can email me at info at .com, or else if you want to join our tutoring program or you want to purchase our materials, please visit our website, www.roshchem.com. Thanks, and I will see you in my next video.